thanks uh, to everyone attending this uh, this webinar. This is a chance today for Guido and I to present uh, to the community Gardant. Uh, Gardant is a new name uh, for an established shop. Uh, uh, Gardant is effectively the credit and investment uh, uh, management business uh, of Credito Fondiario, which has been spun off and uh, uh, transformed into a separate entity, 100% focused uh, on credit servicing and credit investment. Uh, and the chance today will be to explain to you what we do, how we have organized ourselves and what is our mission, and hopefully how we can find opportunity to work uh, with many of uh, the people and, and, and partners that are uh, around the computer today. I just wanted to start uh, with uh, a short uh, uh, video of, of our new brand identity garden, uh, which become a common name in the industry, and just uh, explain to everyone what garden means, uh, starting from the pronunciation garden uh, to the effective uh, uh, meaning. Uh, of this term for us uh, as business partners uh, to investors and banks. Effectively, garden comes from uh, either the English guard uh, or the French uh, garde and has a meaning linked to uh, defense, protection, uh, guarding against uh, 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 the tides of the world. And this is something that to us identifies the way that we want to cooperate uh, with investors and partners uh, in the credit management sector. Great. Thank you, Mirko. I guess we can start by saying uh, we are the guardians. We were trained together, we are aligned financially, and we're seasoned by several victorious campaigns. So part of the, the, the puns and hope to keep this as informal and as uh, professional as possible in terms of facts, uh, I just wanted to present who we are and what we've done together. Uh, 35 years experience, which is a lot, but still lots of learning and lots of opportunities ahead. And uh, apart from uh, my background, credit before doing securitization, structured finance, and then did a lot of private equity investment, uh, especially uh, in uh, Credo for the Avio eight years ago. Uh, Mirko has, uh, has good experience, more focused on financial institutions, m &A background, corporate finance, more investment banking, uh, and obviously ran all the financial sponsors group for uh, Citibank. Uh, it's together, uh, we've been working since the end of 2013, we bought uh, Creator from Diario, managed to turn it around uh, in all the activities that we sorted, started around, including obviously all the uh, NPL, UTP, lending, and uh, investing and servicing uh, while we spun off all the activity which were purely banking license related. So now we can focus on what we've done very well and successfully over the years. So, Mirko, I think you can go through some of the numbers that represent what we've done, what we've achieved. Thanks, Guido. And uh, obviously, this is a very one directional uh, discussion. And uh, the, the invitation that we uh, make to everyone is to uh, put forward questions. So we will see them live. And to the extent possible, we will answer and comment on them uh, live. We wanted to give you a couple of figures on, on who we are. Precisely because we are today, we have a tendency today to present ourselves to the market as a effectively new player because we have a new identity, new brand. In reality, uh, what Garden is, uh, is something that we have been building uh, with a team uh, over the last uh, effectively eight years. So yeah. we're one of the leaders in the credit sector in Italy today. Just to give you a couple of uh, elements that we think are very interesting is that uh, we, as a group, manage uh, uh, over 45 billion of nominal value of loans of credits uh, across all our uh, asset management services. 20 billion of those uh, uh, are managed by us as special services, i.e. collector of cash flows linked uh, to the underlying credit. We have over 300 employees, uh, uh, highly skilled professionals uh, with background uh, in primary investment banks, consultants, uh, uh, other services, uh, market operators. And thanks to that team, uh, we have made uh, over the last uh, four or five years over 1.2 billion of investments, uh, and we mean here purchase price. That corresponds to more or less seven, to seven eight billion of, of investment, uh, mostly secured in the corporate and SME sector for over a billion of actual investment uh, on balance sheet uh, with the old heart uh, of credit of Fondiario. The special servicing uh, activity, again, it's one of the largest in Italy. Uh, in 2020, in a COVID situation, 
uh, the team gathered over 600 million of cash uh, out of the portfolios and the management, uh, which is uh, uh, an incredible achievement in, in difficult market conditions and working uh, uh, from a distance. The servicing activity is uh, rated externally by uh, two of the largest rating agencies, Fitch and S&P, and we were actually upgraded by both uh, uh, last year, thanks to the advancement in the investment uh, and, and, and the infrastructure that we put together. As uh, uh, SPV securitization uh, expert, uh, we have under management over 40 uh, legal vehicles, a special purpose vehicle for the purposes of securitization transactions. We are one of the largest in Italy in the field and we act both for us and for third party. And the other element that is very relevant, uh, having had the opportunity to build an infrastructure effectively from scratch over 70 years, we made the most out of the new technologies without legacy. And we have, for example, 100% of our IT infrastructure in private cloud, which uh, together with other elements that we put in place allowed us to work throughout 2020 effectively with full continuity to, to, the, to the ongoing business so without disruption. Thank you, Mirko. I think what we wanted to lay out here is how we're structured. And the reason it's relevant is that beforehand there was a single company. Now we've organized under separate companies, but we've maintained what is our key hallmark of being not only integrated operationally with the same standards of quality, but also alignment of interest. So there's no possible conflict between the roles that we play in the different companies. So on the one hand, Gardner Investor of SGR is a registered management, asset management company. It has already two funds under management and we expect to create more and are raising a constantly new fundraising mode to pursue our investments. Our investments have not stopped since we started the restructuring and have been going ongoing, ongoing throughout the restructuring. So we have made investments as of last year and also just before the summer, already through the, the platform of the asset management platform. The purpose of the asset management platform is not just to reserve it to our initial investors that are all invested obviously in these funds, but also open it up to third party investors with very transparent rules whereby we give the advantage of the integrated platform and the alignment of interest to third party investors. What does that mean? It means that the actual special servicer not just has a servicing contract with all the credentials and experience, but has a financial investment, substantial financial investment in the capital of every investment they manage, which is well beyond any expected fees from the specific investment. So it's true alignment, not just as an incentive to a lot of uh, previous alignment structures of other investors and servicing companies, but it's actually a, a, bit, a proper investment, an asset investment in the, in the single investment managed, without which there's no fees. <clears throat> actually, it's calculated so that if the investment does not get a satisfactory return, the fees are negative. And basically it's a cost, it's a, it's a loss of the investment on behalf of the servicer if the business plan is not performed. And that ensures alignment in a way that does not exist in our view and our experience. We haven't seen any other transactions. And there's always a good reason uh, for servicers to pretend to be independent and not be aligned. Uh, effectively, our experience over 25 years is that if you don't have a financial alignment with the investor, you don't always work in their interest. So alignment is fundamental, uh, which means that both the master and the special servicer uh, have an, an interest in the performance of the transactions. What does MasterGardner do? It basically does all the activities the finance company does, so all the new financing, all the new lending, all the credit activity tied to the uh, servicing of credits. And so that we can lend, we can uh, buy, we can restructure loans as flexible as a bank, substantially in the credit area. And so we do all the servicing, master servicing under the law 130, which provides for a regulated entity like Master Garden to, to provide such activities. Special Garden is the uh, trans is a part of the company that's focused on the servicing of the transactions and in servicing on all sides. It's not just NPL collections, it's credit management. So we have a credit activity which assesses UTPs and corporates for either new lending or increased lending uh, when we see a possibility of restructuring the company and bringing it out of uh, UTP or NPL status. Uh, we do all the leasing, which needs a, a 
these specific activities you have a division that only looks at these same activity uh, both during the legal recovery but mostly and most importantly during the kind of uh, recovery of the asset transformation of the asset and resale or rental of the asset uh, which are fundamental and it has to be seen as distinct because very often people say they do everything least and then basically all they do is manage the legal recovery and also tied to the real estate activity is the Ryoko, which is a substantial support to the recovery strategies, but has to again be implemented with very good care and attention to what you're doing. Because the biggest mistake most people do is they say, great, we buy an asset option, and only after they buy it, they realize that it's got to be managed, it's got to be serviced, it's got to be restructured, maybe it needs to completion. Uh, and so we look specifically before we buy assets on how to implement value creation strategy and we do that internally so we have all the professionals to make sure that the site is secure that the building that needs to be completed is completed according to our criteria and that the uh, resale value and the resale process is managed through the best possible outcome uh, so that's something which i wouldn't underestimate but it's fundamental the activities of the special master are integrated so there's no Disincentive, there's no inefficiency. The fact they're structured as different companies is due to legal reasons, uh, but the, uh, they're effectively the same divisions of the bank previously set up as separate companies. We split out uh, garden stability servicing at the bottom because we have a third party investor, uh, you know, very uh, good and uh, close partner uh, that we have a joint venture with. The activities of garden special servicing are follows the same rules, the same guidelines, the same management as the rest of special gardens. So there's no distinction between the management of any assets that we manage on behalf of any investor. Obviously, mandates are different and maybe targets are different, but the principles, the verifications, the controls, the incentives are all the same. And so full alignment and uh, performance throughout. One of the things that also distinguishes us is how we're owned. Probably heard we maintain the ownership as we had it before, which is 87% Elliott. They invested a lot of capital. The 87% is not due to any purchase, but it's due to capital increases over three different uh, events. And so that uh, management, the initial investors, including me and Kai, have been diluted over time, but we're still present with the same capital invested at the beginning. Moving on, I take also the opportunity to answer one of the questions that was put forward in the meantime, which is uh, what is the, 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 the scope of our activity and in which countries and jurisdictions uh, on top of Italy we are active. Uh, so the, I uh, think, uh, uh, comment is that as a mission, as a mission, we built up uh, this scheme and this infrastructure over the last few years in Italy, covering uh, uh, Italian banks uh, and Italian credit management uh, uh, I don't know if you saw me on a question specific at this point. We just arrived. And, uh, yeah, so I've seen, I seen the first question on jurisdictions, and, uh, and I think the comment here is uh, we were born in Italy because, uh, I mean, we, we all have an international background. The top management team of, uh, of Garvent uh, uh, has an international investment banking type of, uh, of background, uh, and we decided to uh, move on Italy because there was an opportunity. Uh, we thought there was a space to build a uh, team and, and, and a company that could uh, prosper in, the, in that sector and this is what we've done. We have been looking with the interest uh, uh, over time uh, at neighboring countries. Uh, it is something that we at this stage uh, uh, have not pursued because we think that uh, Italy continue to represent and we represent over the next few years and we get into that in some of the slides later on uh, an, an incredible opportunity uh, for, uh, for investing. If I can just add to this specific point, I think one of the key successes we have in Italy is the focus and the experience on the local market. And uh, we would uh, need to see the same focus and experience in other markets before we enter them. Because if you look at the pattern of both servicers and investors that have multi jurisdictions, it's often hit and miss. And while people look at it as diversification of risk, you can also see it as a concentration of risk in each specific country. And if you don't have satisfactory experience, that impacts disproportionately to the diversification risk. Absolutely. And the slide here that we are projecting uh, uh, effectively shows what we see as the opportunity in the Italian market. Uh, 
which is very broad. Uh, and uh, in order to be captured, uh, you need the type of infrastructure that Guido just described, uh, that, that we have put together within the garden group, covering the different angles of expertise, uh, and, and that they are all relevant uh, to make it happen. First, uh, first uh, uh, the COVID situation hit the country hard, as hard as many other countries, but Italy in particular with the network of SME uh, export-oriented enterprises uh, uh, got hit uh, uh, particularly hard. And these companies that were supported by the state with government guarantees for uh, the period covering uh, uh, the lockdown and the most difficult moments uh, of the pandemic, uh, many of them are in temporary difficulty and need proactive uh, uh, counterparties uh, to talk to that knows uh, credit, uh, knows business and can find a solution to put them back on course, on track, uh, for, 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 for uh, growth uh, and profitability. And the estimate by many market uh, commentators is that there are over 80 billion of loans uh, at risk, uh, covering 100,000 uh, companies. Uh, and that is a specific area in which, uh, as a credit and, 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 and UTP and restructuring expert, that we want to be focusing on. Two, banks uh, uh, will continue to be the leveraging uh, and will continue to be focusing uh, on core uh, activities, uh, which means that the room for partners uh, to dispose of uh, non-performing exposure on get servicing on buckets of non-performing loans uh, will continue to be there and possibly could even increase. Uh, in Italy, the recovery resilience plans will inject uh, over 190 billion of new resources over the next few years. That will drive the activity of the banks and the requirement from the banks uh, to uh, not take care of non-core activities on which we want to play a role. Banks still has a legacy portfolio that need to be disposed of in order to meet the provision of the calendar provisioning and the input and pressure from the regulators to clean up the balance sheet precisely to be doing their own uh, core business. And that is still probably 100, 140 billion of non-performing exposure still on balance sheet that need to be the leverage over the next few years. In parallel, in parallel, which is very important for us because that is one of the key points on which we focus from the very beginning, the continuous technological innovation on the field of data and credit management, and we can, we'll get back to that uh, with a specific point later on, uh, allow us to increasingly, in an increasingly efficient manner, treat data, utilize data to uh, make our underwriting process more robust uh, and to make our servicing collection activities more efficient uh, and, 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 and more profitable. Distress credit, which is another key element that comes up uh, often in our discussion with investors, is becoming an alternative investment as a class per se. So we think that the integration of the underwriting and investment capabilities with the understanding of credit and ability to create value out of credit will be key to pursue a strategy of transforming distressed credit into an asset class that a lot of investors will want to have an exposure on. And the SGR, the fund management company idea that we have and on which Guido will, will dwell upon is an important factor in this strategy of ours. Finally, finally, um, there's a huge backlog, over 200 billion of loans uh, in liquid or distressed that, that, that changed hands over the last few years in Italy between 2015 and 2021 that is currently and partially being resold in the secondary market by investors who even didn't know the market uh, well or uh, have completed the cycle of investment. And that is also an element of interest for us and a source of potential uh, business activity, both as a service and most importantly, as an investor. Thank you. I want to focus a bit on, on the kind of how, what we can offer as an investment partner. I think Mirko has pointed out that we've been doing this uh, with we invested 1.2 billion over the last four years. Uh, we've actually been investing, I've been investing for close to 30 years. And, and so I've seen many cycles and the opportunity and what we believe strongly is that the market entity is a permanent market. There's always cycles. Uh, but there's a permanent market for professional management and professional management leads to good investment opportunities. Good investment opportunities are created by professional management. And so the integrated and cycle that we believe is fundamental element of our, of our expertise is tied to the integrated service. We have an integrated platform where we go purchase the service. The rating is a proof that we service third party mandates correctly. 
that it's not just a controlled owned uh, investor owned uh, platform. This is fundamental to our approach. We have one of the most uh, experienced investment teams in Italy on transactions. We've seen very good ones, some less good. Uh, but one of the things that we see later is the quality of what we've been investing over the years and the capacity to systematically perform uh, the return expected by investors uh, through different asset classes, through different periods of the cycle. And this has been also confirmed by Elliott's continued support and investment, as we mentioned, three subsequent capital increases over three different years to sustain our activity. Why? Because we make good investments. And I think Elliott's reputation tests that. Uh, Elliott is not present in the company. They invested in the company and in the management. Uh, they're not very independent of Elliott in terms of decision making on the ground. Our ability to source is tied to our relationship within the market. And I think we've seen that we often do transactions with very different companies, banks, investors. Uh, we don't always do repeat deals. And while we have some longstanding relationships and contracts, we're not overly reliant on any single contract or relationship. I think if we want the ability to both find opportunities, price them, and resolve them is also based on our ability to understand what we've done and frankly what we've done wrong. If you, if you have the track record and the numbers and the experience in IT systems, they allow you to track what you've done and learn from what you've done rather than simply react to difficulties at the time and at the moment. And the seamless use of information is probably one of our strongest points, one that gives credibility and reliance to our investors as to how we approach. The returns. Everybody focuses on returns, and I think that while people are great at promising hugely kind of over 20% returns, uh, we actually deliver well over 15% returns at, at the end of the investment cycle, which we feel is very, very good, especially since it's risk adjusted, so that we have very few, if none, actually, of investments that have gone uh, below uh, what we expected. And so we tend to focus on very cautious execution. But does that mean necessarily cautious investments? Because if we take a risk, it's because we've understood it and we have the ability to manage it. And uh, when you take on a new asset class, you don't have the caution of experience or comparables, but you have the, the caution of organization and experience in managing situations, which allows you and investors to be relaxed about how we will address the issues, even if they've never been actually addressed before. That's a key element of why we're attractive and have been chosen. We take advantage of what people said, you know, the, the investments. Don't forget that not only people have looking at new investments, new positions, but a lot of things that end up being lost. Lost because nobody looks after them well, and the investor has, at the end of the investment period, is not focused. The servicer may not be focused because he has better things to do and more profitable things to do. There's a lot of situations of existence of existing investments, maybe outside of the banking sector, that need attention and need professional management. We look at credit opportunities going forward. We, uh, we look at the uh, ability to pockets, understand and identify pockets where to adapt our credit approach to situations, which may mean that there's a less, a less lending from banks, a need for lending from experienced providers, like what we see in some transactions, uh, but that uh, but that haven't been offered by banks. And so we'll apply our experience and our funds to provide straight lending. We've done it in the past and we expect that to be all the more popular and necessary in the future. I think we could go through one of the things that uh, I've raised, which is the IT, which we'll, we'll talk you through, which is a fundamental aspect. Uh, this is, I mean, we mentioned briefly before, but data, data is, uh, is the backbone uh, of uh, uh, most of the activities that we do on the investment and on the servicing side. And why we focus on data? Because that is where, uh, uh, with Vido in 2013, first focused our attention when we started building this infrastructure and, and, and the team around the infrastructure. We have different sources of information. Uh, and uh, we think that the combination of those sources of information together is something that is very unique uh, to Garden, to us in the Italian market. And given the 
uh, characteristics of the Italian market, we think is an incredible value added to add the robustness to the work we, did, we do. The four uh, uh, sources of information are one, the master servicing. We said that we are one of the largest master servicing in the country. We serve uh, as, as master, i.e. as administrative operator, 40 billion of, of outstanding loans. Uh, this is over 200K of borrowers uh, covering uh, over a million loans uh, with uh, 1.5 billion of collections every year. These include collections uh, run by us and also by third parties, uh, which we monitor and of which we have track, uh, we, have, we are able to track the flows and understand uh, the behavior and the dynamics behind the flows. Then we work as a special servicer. Clearly, you have an in-depth in knowledge of the underlying uh, activities. Uh, uh, Two-third, uh, I mean, three-fourths uh, of the assets that we manage are on behalf of third parties. Uh, and that is very relevant because uh, it shows that our special servicing platform is a market, an open market special, uh, special servicing platform that works uh, with us and with third party that selects uh, us uh, as the best service around. And uh, specifically, we have an expertise on the real estate side. Uh, Widow hinted at that earlier which uh, adds uh, an element uh, of uh, depth uh, in the analysis that we do on the portfolios, specifically in the world of corporate uh, uh, and real estate backed uh, uh, lending. Due diligence, uh, we are investors. Uh, we spend a lot, we are investors, we spend a lot of time going through opportunities in the market. Uh, every time we work on a portfolio, we do a thorough analysis. Uh, sometimes uh, we win, sometimes uh, we decide to uh, skip the opportunity, but we keep all the, information and, and all the intelligence that we gather from those analyses, uh, we've actually made more than 25,000 uh, individual BPs over the last few years, over 20,000 valuations. Uh, we looked at over 50 billion of, of, of nominal value of loans. Uh, and that is, is a wealth uh, of information that we continue to rely on and, and, and we work and we interpolate. And then we have the portfolio analytics, the analytics tool uh, which is uh, everything around the ability to understand all the data that we gather, uh, understand behaviors, uh, apply advanced uh, data analytics uh, to those uh, numbers. Uh, and this help us forecast, uh, help, uh, help us define business plan uh, for, 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 for investment and help us uh, focus the special servicing activity where it matters most. And all of these uh, uh, seamlessly flow into our proprietary data warehouse, where all information is stored, all the system uh, are connected one to the other. And the one in the uh, yellow dotted boxes uh, are all software and, 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 and instruments uh, proprietary built by us uh, and continuously upgraded uh, with the new innovation that comes uh, to the market uh, uh, and that we can utilize to improve the effectiveness uh, of these, uh, of these uh, uh, results. So in one word, uh, we think that this is one of the most robust uh, and, uh, approach to underwriting that you can find around. I think I, I, you know, the, the, the connection with the next page, which is say investment process, the purpose of this is not really to go through what any investment banker or advisor can say should be the ideal investment process. This is what we do systematically and daily. And this goes to show how we implement the data before. But the kind of things that distinguish us is that with the data warehouse, we can run what if scenarios and past transactions. And that is very powerful. I don't think anybody really is, is able to do that, to say, what if we had done this, what would have happened? Because that allows you to, um, to predict much better what will happen in specific situations. So we go and go through the various points, but key thing is that we cover so many things and we do all this in house. So we don't need third parties to perform this activity. We use third parties to perform the last leg of certain aspects. So whether when we do the real estate due diligence, we will ask third parties to run valuations, but they run valuations based on our criteria, with our format, with our standard approach, with our criteria, and then we verify them. So we always verify the work that's provided by third parties throughout the process. Uh, obviously, the, the indication of time depends on the size of contracts. You know, we buy single names, small portfolios, large portfolios. Obviously, the transactions are different. Another thing that characterizes when we do the origination is that we look at solutions. So there's a problem. We'll come up with a structure which has a solution 
and that solution will come with a specific process to guarantee the deal execution in line with the client's expectations. Not only is there a question of deal execution, uh, which finishes with the closing, but the following phase of monitoring, servicing, and special servicing are fundamental to be preempt pre any mistakes. If you don't do the due diligence correctly, it is impossible to do onboarding correctly and the monitoring and management of the portfolio. How many times have you heard that the results of the due diligence when you invest are completely different from the results when you onboard the credit? Uh, if you don't address that ahead of time, that happens every time. And I think that's one of the key things that we rarely have. We always have certain mistakes happen all the time, but we never have uh, issues where the way you implement the due diligence is, is incompatible or does not speak to the onboarding and, and, and following servicing of the assets. Uh, that's a, a fundamental aspect. What we do during the servicing of the assets and repayment process is also unique because we add the credit side. We always look at what is the opportunity in every transaction, where can it end up, what needs to be done in order to make it better, whether it's finishing an unbuilt building, uh, whether it's financing investments, whether it's uh, encouraging the company to merge or to sell out uh, and, and encouraging it with the loan, maybe or some, some temporary finance. We look at all situations from a credit point of view, which allows us to then look at developments in real estate or more private equity type of investments. Apart from the specific investment process, we look at you know, we might be repeating some of what we said before, but we want to focus the attention of all the people today on the fact that we have an integrated system. And this integrated system allows us to look at situations which would not necessarily uh, be looked at by other investors and or servicers. Uh, if you have a servicing company which said, oh, great opportunity to do servicing, but we've got to do a retention investment, they might say, oh, it's not our business, we don't invest. And even if they say, oh, it's a great man man mandate, I want to invest, they probably don't have the ability to analyze the underlying risk of that investment. So we look at things different ways. We have the approach uh, from the monitoring and the capability of the servicing. Uh, we have the information, as, as Mirko mentioned before. Uh, we have the deal flow from the contacts the market. And we have the resources because we have our offices around Italy, which allows us to look at things locally and be very, very effective in terms of uh, performance on the recovery of the, of the strategy of each asset. I think that if I can interject, you know, what really differentiates our approach is that we've built a critical mass of activities and operations that allow us to effectively have in-house everything that is required to perform the investment process and the after investment management of the activities with the ability, thanks to our infrastructure, to utilize third party when and if required on niche activities, but everything is internalized and, is, and it is under our control, which okay. is very really relevant for, for, for being able to control uh, the entire uh, cycle of investment. Exactly. And, and as you know, Italy is a market which is peculiar, it has uh, great opportunities, but the uh, challenges. And our ability to be able to be effective without being huge. We don't need tens of billions of new business in order to maintain this infrastructure. But we have, we think, the most effective infrastructure allows us to look at medium-sized transactions, wait and see for certain investments for the best investments. And, and so we have an approach which allows us to create synergies and to create an alignment of interest. We have a contractual relationship between the companies to protect third-party investors from any potential conflict. We have strict rules uh, on, to protect investors within the fund management company and the fund itself. So we, we think we're best in class, basically. We wanted to spend a couple of minutes on the two uh, specialized uh, companies uh, that we mentioned earlier. One is the Special Garden, which is the actual company focusing on special servicing. Uh, we briefly mentioned before, we managed 20 billion of assets under management, uh, over a billion are UTPs. Uh, the most relevant element here is that we started uh, servicing UTPs back in 2016. Uh, so we're probably the first of the Italian servicer 
that uh, started managing UTPs and we have already completed uh, a cycle of management uh, uh, for five years uh, with very satisfactory results. So that, that is an angle that we continue to invest on and that we present to partners and investors uh, uh, because we really believe that there is a lot of value that can be extracted with a focused strategy in, in, in the corporate and SME UTP, i.e. re-performing uh, uh, businesses. We manage over 30 portfolios, uh, 60,000 borrowers uh, across uh, effectively also performing as primary servicer in, in, in specific instances, for example, uh, mortgages uh, and PLUTPs across corporate and SME, banking and leasing, and retail mortgages with a view of, of, of re-performing, with a re-performing angle. Um, in terms of uh, abilities, uh, we can manage multiple portfolios uh, and uh, the objective is always with investment hard to maximize the value to be extracted from an investment portfolio from the beginning to the end uh, of the cycle. We mentioned already, we work a lot for third parties and this is an element of, of uh, robustness and protection to investors that we are utilizing the best people to recover the portfolios. Uh, we have been selected uh, in, in auction processes as a service of GAX transactions, uh, and that is, is, is another element of our ability to be in the market. We are rated, we mentioned. We have the proprietary data system. Uh, in terms of collections, uh, we are in the top three in Italy for cash collections in the year. And two very, very relevant uh, ancillary elements, which becomes core to implement the strategies, uh, are our ability to focus on uh, real estate services uh, and uh, the ability to apply real estate know-how and strategies to the recovery of the collateral or credit. Uh, we manage today seven uh, REOCO companies in the context of different securitizations and we're probably the largest player in that uh, sub-sector. And finally, uh, last but not least, uh, being an investor and having uh, a, a banking DNA in, in our team, uh, we look at the specific uh, situation of the performing also with the credit hub. So we're able to understand and, 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 and structure and provide new finance uh, precisely with the objective of relaunches or restructuring or put companies in a re-performing uh, uh, situation. And that is a specific area of expertise. We have a team focusing on that. Uh, and this is a really valuable element uh, to our recovery strategy. If I can add to the last point, Mirko, I think the Ryoko, we're the first people that uh, structured the Ryoko within a, a rated securitization and implemented them. And I think that goes to also the proof of the integration because we have a dedicated capital markets team that does structuring, has the arrangement of transaction and has the ability to look within the documentation of existing transaction or create new transactions, which will be both compliant with best expectations market standards and the best possible performance of the underlying investment, which is also the motivation why we've uh, beefed up our ability to lend and to look at credit creatively, because it adds value. No, absolutely. Master Garden, uh, the twin company, uh, its, uh, its focus is on the master servicing and securitization services. We call uh, for third party, the entire array of the value chain for securitization from the structuring of the vehicles, the setup of the SPV, Reoco, setup and management in the capital markets angle. We can manage for us or on behalf of third parties, uh, the entire selection and evaluation of the portfolios, uh, performing and non-performing. And uh, in the manager of the portfolio, we provide everything uh, off the shelf or specific solution structure around the needs of a specific clients to make the most out of an investment transaction. In that, we work in the market as a third party provider and, and, and anyone who's looking at investing in the Italian market needs a partner to structure the investment. We are clearly in the market and open for business. All of this is ancillary and also provide data to the entire value chain that we mentioned before. I think to, to, end, to end our presentation, to hopefully some move questions, I just want to sum up what the opportunity is we see in Italy. It's not just been the most active uh, market since 2014 around Europe. We feel that that uh, historical market will need to kind of phase two and phase three 
investments or opportunities. Uh, keep in mind that uh, most of the average life of most legal recovery procedures are well over six years, uh, which means that there's often a, a time for different types of intervention, investments, or restructuring, both at the holding company of the whole investment or line by line. And we see these opportunities come up daily. And so that will be continuing regardless of what happens on the new sale. I'm sorry, new sales and disposal from banks uh, or existing investors. Obviously, the, uh, the legal and political framework is very supportive to uh, creative transactions or disposal, restructuring, refinancing of investments, and also disposal and recovery specific positions. So we feel that there's some substantial opportunity in the market. And on this, I'd like to focus, if I can, your attention on if you want to ask questions, maybe on maybe three themes that we raised and we think are the key to what we're proposing, which is our whole cycle approach, our integrated approach, what do you think of it, if you think that's a value ladder or not? What do you think about the market opportunity in Italy? Or how we effectively have provided for alignment of interest between this investor and servicer, which we believe is the, which is the fundamental base on which we have created all the investments opportunities and enhanced returns to our investors. And why we let uh, people think around it, uh, the, the, the final, uh, if you want to wrap up the discussion is uh, Gardant, uh, as we said, uh, is born out of the business built within Credo Fondiario in these first eight years of existence uh, into a newly established company, which brings together the experience, the people, the infrastructure, the capital and the know-how that uh, allow us to reach uh, the results that we mentioned uh, before. We uh, proud of ourselves to be partner or solution implementer to investors uh, and banking uh, partners. Uh, we have an integrated platform. As we said, uh, we continuously update the platform. We try and bring to this business uh, a sustainable approach in the way that we manage clients, in the way that we solve situations, in the way that we address uh, plans for restructuring and reperforming of underlying uh, uh, companies. Very importantly, we have a long-term strategy in Italy. We are an Italian player based in Italy with an Italian focus and a long-term approach uh, uh, where we want to continue to strengthen our position and, and, and increase our market shares uh, over, the long, uh, over the long run. Data analytics is uh, uh, one of the pillars of the way we do things. Uh, we try to use all the information that we gather from our experience and from internal sources and utilize those to improve uh, both our investment and uh, our, our servicing activities. And uh, again, last but not least, uh, we think we are for a force in the economy to drive uh, the, the, the recovery of the productivity in Italy. We probably, we, we think we are able to move uh, resources and, 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 and scarce capital to companies that have a chance uh, of, of, of reperforming and getting back uh, to a, a, a sustainable growth uh, pattern. So this is what we are. And this is what we tell everyday people that we interact with. And uh, we think uh, it, it is a distinctive factors of ours. I don't know if uh, if there are any sort of yes, I see one. I see one here. Uh, given Garden's expertise, what is your view on Italian NPLs? You think you mark it out, but does Garden see a strong deal pipeline over the next 12 months given the potential wave of NPLs post COVID? I think there's several questions here, Mirko. I'll give a go and then you can, you can add. Um, the, the issues next 12 months, I start from there because next 12 months may be um, less kind of a, a tsunami or wave as I've heard it called than it, it can be expected because it takes time. It takes time and what probably will happen the next 12 months is not NPLs. Uh, question specifically, NPLs next 12 months, we see that as a kind of whatever is endemic in the situation, in the positions, banks getting rid of certain positions, maybe the most mature ones, uh, investors coming to the end of the kind of management cycle of the funds. Uh, and, but we see the more opportunity in the next 12 months, probably the UTP space, because that's what the companies will be going through. That's what the banks will be facing, the difficult, initial difficulties of companies. Uh, so we expect, obviously, the UTP uh, to be a growing opportunity in the next 12 months, or at least strong enough, as banks have to come to grips with the realities of the underlying credits that they've uh, 
managed through a kind of a situation during COVID, which was uh, everything was still, and whatever problems the companies were having, it didn't come to surface. They will be coming to surface, there will be opportunities, but it'll be mostly in the kind of pre UDP and UDP phase. And also, just to, to wrap, wrap up on that before going uh, to the next question, uh, the combination of uh, what Guido was saying, some uh, uh, marginal intervention in the NPL world, uh, an initial wave uh, in the UTP world, an ongoing uh, activity on the leasing side, because leasing comes across NPL and UTP, but per se it's a different asset class, uh, and it's something that we've been focusing for a while. Uh, you, you don't invent yourself as a leasing buyer from, 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 from night to day. Uh, you need to build an infrastructure and you need to build uh, an ability to uh, collect uh, and, and resell in the markets uh, the underlying collateral. So there's a significant pipeline, probably across different asset classes and, and, and uh, with different objectives by the sellers, but still very strong. Uh, and, and the expectation is that with all the elements that we highlighted before, the implementation of the resilience fund uh, and the pressure from the regulator that we continue, expect to continue to focus banks uh, on the core lending business rather than managing uh, uh, legacy assets uh, will keep the pipeline very robust uh, for, for the next few years. Okay, if, if you get it there, on, the, on the next question, which is how is Guardian incorporating sustainable ESG goals into transactions? Uh, it's a very good question. The question is obviously having set ourselves up as an asset management company, we faced, and I think with most people that tried to face it from scratch rather than trying to just imitate the platitudes that offer and seen and read on uh, prospectuses and uh, websites. Uh, so we went to the core of what we do and how we can do that better. And there's no doubt that we can do things in a more responsible way, and most importantly, uh, do it in a transparently transferable way. Trans transparent and responsible way so you can demonstrate to third parties that you have an approach to negotiation even, uh, to interaction, to uh, valuing what the potential of the company is, uh, not just in a financial manner, but also in a, just a process and a uh, respect. Uh, I believe strongly personally, I think uh, that uh, my experience leads to me to believe that if you respect the counterpart, you get respect back. If I respect the counterpart, I expect respect from the company. And so I think some of the basic things that happen that in our transaction state can be set into rules which we have done. Uh, on the fact that sustainability, there's always space and we see opportunities. They're not always opportunities that we can make happen, but we look out for them and we try to achieve them. For example, uh, on the roofs of a lot of uh, recovered assets, we promote and encourage the installation of solar panels. Why? Because it's possible, it's actually convenient, and it's, uh, and it's environmentally friendly. So whatever we think we can do, and uh, welcome to obviously see how to improve it, but we think we've set ourselves apart in ESG by creating a framework and principles that we can apply to our industry, which is very specific, and do sort of transparent you know, manner so it can be reviewed by investors. I agree. Completely with Guido, we, we spent a lot of time uh, asking ourselves uh, how to uh, move and transform that into our day-to-day -day reality. And I think that there are effectively two approaches, top-down and bottom-up. What we're doing here is bottom-up to make sure that every single situation, every single project, uh, every single negotiation with the counterparty is based on knowledge of the situation and a fair assessment uh, of uh, uh, what is happening, the status quo and the objective. And that is the first element in the chain uh, of a sustainable approach uh, to credit collection, specifically in the SME and corporate world, uh, which is where we focus most. Uh. Well, if there's no other questions, I guess we've probably taken up enough of your time. We welcome any questions either by email or by phone or during the uh, IMN seminar next week in London. More than happy to meet up and talk through any specific questions or point you may want to raise.